I think that, that redistricting and reapportionment is very much inside baseball. Uh, I think that I have never seen in my you know 12 years in the, in the state house, I've never seen a truly independent commission. I mean, if the commission gets appointed by somebody, it's not independent, you know? And uh, I, you look in California where they have a commission, uh, the National Association of Latino Elected Officials, NALEO, you know, was very critical of the map that was presented by the commission in California, said that you know, minorities were left behind. You look in Arizona, I mean, Governor Brewer called a special session to throw out the head of the redistricting commission because uh, she thought he, he or she wasn't being fair and was maybe being too democratic. Uh, you know, you're always going to have some control when, when there's someone else doing the appointing. And, and frankly, you know, if, if there's going to be somebody, you know, brawling it out when it comes to redistricting, it ought to be the electeds uh, that sign up for the job and not try to, you know, mask it and pass it off as an independent work by independent commissioners. Yeah, it seems like, you know, there, there might even be an argument that the visibility of the fights is actually giving you a little more of the transparency and a little more attention to it that you might want. I mean, as long as there's, I mean, as long as there's an interest in the outcome, it's it's going to be very difficult to achieve it, pure independence uh, at a commission level. As far as redistricting is concerned, um, it seems to me that the the redistricting systems that we have currently have no independence. And so the question really is, isn't some independence better than no independence? So you mentioned you know, California, for example. California's new system is a system based on a citizen's commission rather than Jeff Wentworth's, which is a politician's commission. Um, it seems to me that they're all quite different. Uh, and, and it seems to me that the California system is moving in, in a better direction than we are currently. And so I'd like you to comment. Well, you know, I think that, that you know, always the, the, the proof is in the pudding. I think that, you know, I have not yet seen a proposal or have had explained to me a proposal that would really guarantee, you know, a modicum of independence. I mean, you're always going to have winners and losers in a, in a, in a game like redistricting. Uh, but, but I think that, um, you know, what's being proposed in Texas doesn't seem to get us uh, but one step removed from the elected officials. And, and frankly, uh, it doesn't seem like a good idea. Uh, I'm not familiar with the California model. Uh, I don't know how the citizens are appointed. I don't know if they run. Uh, you know, in Texas, you can draw a line from El Paso to Corpus, and everything south of that line has, you know, is, is one Texas, and everything north of that line is another Texas. Uh, I'd like to see how these citizen districts, you know, evolve. I mean, even in a state like, please, <laughs> even in a state like Texas, I'll be real honest with you. Uh, the beginning of our lawsuit. Uh, in redistricting included a, a paragraph that we were fighting uh, for single member districts in the Railroad Commission. Uh, and, uh, and frankly, it concerned lots of people uh, because I think you can start a district from the tip of Brownsville and move up to San Antonio and hang a right turn and go to El Paso. And every day of the week, a Hispanic will get elected uh, to the Railroad Commission. Uh, and, and so, I mean, I think that there are ways to be creative about doing things better. Uh, and redistricting is certainly an area that could, could, could use a lot of improvement. Uh, but, but as I said, I mean, absent your idea, I've, I've yet to see something in the floor of the House that would suggest that there's going to be some semblance of independence. <laughs>